What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now, there's been a few changes. I might have been a little bit early with the workshop tour, but I went mad, decided to paint the place and then change the layout while I was at it. So I've extended the worktop, added a sanding station, added a few more bits and pieces, but I'm going to change it again. I'm not happy. My hand planes are not up on the wall and that's because they have begun to rust. So I've put them in the press here, but I don't want them in the press. I want them up on the wall. So I want to build a plain till and a tool cabinet. Now, this time of year in Ireland, it gets very, very cold and the humidity is right up. So it's gonna be 100% humidity at freezing temperatures. So everything condensates. It's very hard to stop it. So I want to build a tool cabinet up on the wall here with a plain till in it that I can close the door and put in a dehumidifier in there with the tools just to try and help slow down the rusting process. I took out my Lloyd Nielsen um, jack plane and it was rusted on the bottom and I nearly had a heart attack when I saw that. So this is something I'm gonna to have to figure out. So I have a piece of salvage here. It is a TV stand. I'm gonna cut it up, break it down and see if we can build a tool storage cabinet that we can put a dehumidifier in it. Let's do it. Right, this is the TV stand in question. It's made from oak. Um, it's not an expensive piece of kit by any stretch of imagination. It's a bit rough, um, it's kind of warped in places. It's a bit broken up, it's an old stand. It's been thrown out, so I'm gonna repurpose it if we can for a tool cabinet. Um, even the door doesn't fit properly anymore. That's a nice little shelving unit, separate inside. So I think we might try and incorporate this into the tool cabinet if we can. I might cut this in half and make it into two pieces. And then see, these will be handy for small planes and little bits and bobs. And uh, yeah, so we're going to disassemble it. I'm thinking I might be able to keep the top with this frame and this will actually be, make the door. So the door will have this much depth to it so I can put all the tools like chisels and stuff in the door. This will open up and uh, this will be the back place which will be the plain till. I'm thinking, we'll see when it all comes apart. Um, best laid plans and all that. But uh, yeah, so let's start breaking this down and then we can decide how it's going to go back together. Right, we have it broken down to its component parts and I've been staring at it for the last hour wondering what the hell I'm going to do with this and how it's going to go together. I think I have a plan, so this is what we're going to do. The bottom piece I'm going to use as my backboard for my plane till. I have all the side components where um, these panels slotted into it, they're already grooved. So they are perfect for what you need for the bottom of it, the plane till. I'll show you that now in a second. The top then, which is the thickest piece, I'm going to cut in half use that for my sides. The top and bottom will be plywood. I will need to use some plywood just to, because um, I haven't got any more thick material. And then we have the side panels, which I can trim down and they should make a perfect door. So I'll give you a close up now with a plain tail and then we shall cut the top. Let's do that. Okay, so this is our plain tail. And if you want to plan on building yourself a plain tail, all you will need is a backing board um, and some blocks for the end of your plane 
with a groove cut in them, just like that. And the idea being then, let's move all these planes to the side. The bottom of your plane can sit in to that groove there. Then you provide tracks to go between your planes and then you can cut individual blocks of this to go in between your tracks. Now, I've bought some six mil by 19 mil material and that will, I'm gonna route that into the, my backboard that will sit between my planes, that will provide my tracks for my planes to sit into. The bottom of your plane will sit into this guy and then the top of it will sit into the other recess and it'll just barely go into that. So you wanna barely catch it so that you can lift it up and take it out and it'll clip between the two of them. So that's the idea. It'll all make sense when it's finished and when it's all going together anyway, you'll see the processes. So yeah, if you wanna make yourself a plane tail, it's nice and simple. Tracks and some hooks for your planes. There we go. So now what I wanna do, like I said, is cut this top. So let's get on that. Okay, I'm just gonna freehand this and I'm gonna take it over the joint or plane or anyway because it's a little bit cupped and bowed. So we straighten out these two panels. So a little bit of noise now and let's cut this thing. Okay, we have our two side pieces all planed up, squared up, and um, not too bad. Not 100% perfect, but we're, we're, you know, we're salvaging some stuff here, and nothing on this actual um, TV stand was straight. Even the edges of this board aren't too straight, but we're gonna recess this back piece now into this. So I'm gonna take this to the router table, and we're gonna channel in the thickness of this board, which is 11 mil, so. We'll set our router to 11 mil. We'll take an 11 mil um, rebate out of this. That will sit into that, both sides. And the shelf, actually, that came out of the unit is thick enough. So this looks about 15 mil, maybe, is it? Yeah, it's just under, so 13 mil. And that will do for our bottom and our top. So, first thing I'm gonna do is recess this panel into these two, and then we can take a measurement for our bottom, and we will recess it into the bottom and top as well and uh, recess the sides of this so that this, this slots into it as well. So that'll all become very clear. So we've a good bit of round to do now, so let's get on it. So this is where we're at now. I have the routing of the side edge and the top edge done. So that will sit up there like that. And that will sit there just like that. And our top piece, which is this, which has a piece missing out of it, but we're using up what we have. So it doesn't matter too much. That will sit down into the top, just like this. So that's how our carcass is gonna to go together. So we glue and screw that then after we sand everything up. Now I need to cut these side boards to length, they're a little bit long, and do the same on the bottom of these. So recess in our bottom piece. And we're good to go, then it'll be a lot of sanding. And once I have the carcass measured out, I can measure it out from my planes inside. I can mark it out from my tracks, we'll route them out. And uh, then yeah, it's a case of just sand it and assemble the carcass. So let's do that. Right, hopefully you can see what I have you set up there. Just a quick look inside the carcass. I just have a clamp together for now. Nothing is fixed or anything. I'm just laying everything out. So this is how my planes are going to go in. Um, so I should have room to put more planes up on top when I get them. Um, but this is how the planes are going to sit for now. 
and I've just put the rails in between them. So now I'm going to mark out the rails, disassemble everything and route in these rails now that I have them marked. So that's my next job. And I'm going to use this um, shelving unit that came with the TV stand. I'm going to chop it down to size, put it in the top left corner of this toolbox. It'll be handy for shoulder planes and all that kind of stuff. And all my like dovetail markers, marking gauges, everything else can sit in here with the dehumidifier and hopefully it keeps things dry. So yeah, that's where we're at. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys there now. And uh, yeah, so let me rock on. I'm gonna mark out these and get the router out and we can route out all these and get them stuck in. Then we can sand and then it's ready for assembling the carcass. Okay, I'm gonna route in my lines for my track and I've just clamped a straight edge perfectly parallel to my first line. I'm just gonna pull that first line and then I'm gonna make sure all the rest of them are perfectly parallel to that line, just move my straight edge according as I need to. So it should be fairly straightforward. So let's crack on and do it. It's gonna be a bit noisy now. Okay, we had a small bit of a wobble there. It's not too catastrophic. That should slot in there. Perfect. Okay, so that's gonna work perfectly for our track. Lovely stuff. We glue them in place, clamp them, and they'll be perfect. So, I'm gonna repeat that process now for one, two, three, four more, and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, there we go. Our tracks are now in place, so. That's all the routing done. Now I can assemble this carcass after I sand everything. So I need to sand everything, get all this old finish back off it, get it looking some way nice. Then I can glue these in place and then we can assemble the carcass. So I'm gonna go ahead now and sand all this to about 120, 240 grit, I think we might finish at. We don't have to go much more than that. And once I have all that done, I'll get back to you for the glue up and the assembly. Okay guys, we have everything Sand it up as far as 120 grit, I think that's going to be plenty. And uh, it's just a case of glue and screw this together. So I'm just going to build the carcass. I'm going to countersink screws all around it, in the top, in the bottom. And we're going to glue this and screw it together. So it's fairly straightforward. I'll just do this and you guys can watch on if you want. Right, that's basically it. I'm just going to countersink all the screws, glue this together, get this whole carcass made. So I'll rock on, drill out this, get it screwed up and glued up. And there's no point in me boring you guys to death by watching me put a whole bunch of screws in. So I'll show you when I'm done. Right, so let me get on with this and I'll get back to you. Guys, this is where we're at so far. We're all screwed together. So it's just counter sunk screw heads all the way around, glued and screwed, um, a rebate all around, all the parts went together. You saw how we done that with the, the router. So it's all just rebated together. We have our bottom pieces in for our planes. The plane tracks are in, glued. So we're just waiting for the glue to go off. I cut that box that came out of this unit in half. You saw me do that there with the handsaw. Um, stuck that in there. I, I didn't leave it stick all the way out. I didn't want it to have a too deep a box. Otherwise it just get filled full of rubbish. And I want to put a spotlight up in here because I'm going to put a door on it now with Perspex. So a little light shining down to light up the hand planes and stuff inside. So yeah, so this is where we're at so far. Looks like we're going to have a good bit of room here. We might even have some room in the door to put some tools and stuff. And uh, we might even put in a few extra few blocks and stuff down here for um, 
planes as I buy them, I will add to this. And um, we could even hang chisels here and here too. That might be something that might work. So uh, this will be very much a project that I'm gonna add to over the next little while. But now, next thing to do is make the door. Right, our back panel is a ready-made door. It's already a frame, so there's no point in doing too much to this. It's a little bit bigger than our box ourselves, but not much. It overhangs this edge slightly, and the top and the bottom. But you won't see that when the door is closed, so I'm not too worried about it. So what we'll do is we'll chop the legs off this, and then we need to plane down the back, because these two parts sit proud of these, and I want to put a piano hinge down this side. So when I open this door, I want to open it to open right back like that. So uh, that's going to be the idea, I think. Something like that. And uh, I might put some sort of block or catch on the far side just to, um, just so I can leave it open in that position. If I'm going to hang tools on the front of this door, I want something that I can hook onto the wall so that the door is supported. That would be the idea, but we can look at that when I go mounting it up on the wall there. But yeah, it's a ready-made door. I'm not going to do too much with it. There's not much point, really. I could trim it down to be perfectly flush. I might, I might, we'll see. I might plane it down. But uh, for now, let's chop off these legs. I can disassemble this, pull these two panels and put in two perspex sheets and then I'm gonna put a light on this. But I haven't the perspex yet, and I have to get the piano hinge. So for now, I'm gonna square this up as best I can and uh, plane it down, so let's do that. Okay, the next thing I need to do is plane this down to this edge so that this frame sits flat against the door. So it's just a bit of elbow grease to do this. Pretty good. Let's do the other one now. Right, there's our door fitting nicely. You can see it's a little bit oversized, but I'm actually going to leave it like that because I want to get some sort of seal on this door when I close it up. It's not going to be airtight or anything like that. It's just I want to stop the condensating air from getting into this cabinet when it's sitting in this workshop. Like I say, it's really cold in Ireland in the winter time and it's also like nearly 100% humidity at times. It's just a freezing fog and it lingers all day and everything gets wet. So it's hard to keep your tools and cast iron tops free from moisture. So I think an oversized door, it's only slightly oversized, about 10 mil top and bottom. So I think that's gonna be good. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna be pretty happy with this. So this is gonna be our door, ready made for us, so that's not too bad. So I just need to break this frame apart now, slide out these two panels, and then I need to get some perspex tomorrow and fit that in. Sand all this thing up, uh, get the piano hinge on it, put a light in it, and uh, fit our planes. I think we're almost there. So let me get this thing apart now and get it sanded up. That works. <laughs> of course, the last piece will be the only piece that actually was glued and won't come apart, I bet you. But okay, I'm gonna need two power spec sheets that size. That shouldn't be too bad. And that was our top one. That was our bottom one. Okay. 
you know, I can sand up these pieces and that's it for tonight. And I can get back to this tomorrow when I get the parts that I need. So I'll get sanding this and I shall see you guys tomorrow. It's day two. I've got the power specs. Couldn't get the piano hinges. I got a couple of butt hinges. So I've three of them. They'll be fine. The door's going to be light enough. And I have some magnets to hold the door closed and I got a dehumidifier. So it's a case now of assemble this door, get the power specs into it. Everything is sanded up, then we can get a finish on this and start the final assembly. So let's do it. Okay, so I already have the Perspex sheet cut to size. It's four mil Perspex, which is exactly the same size as the panels that came out of the door. So this should be fairly straightforward enough. We'll just let that glue go off for a bit and then we'll get back to it. Okay, I have the planes all set in and the holders screwed in place. So again, it's very simple. It's just a dado routed into these. Some of the planes will be caught on the bottom, some of them caught on the top. Um, the Stanleys, because of the way the handle is, you can't catch them on the bottom, so you have to catch them on the top. So that just sits in, just catches the edge of the plane, so it can't pull out. All you do is just shove it forward and lift it out. Nice little simple system, very effective. It just barely catches the top of the plane. With these ones, it just catches the bottom of the plane. This one's a bit of a snug fit, so there you go. It'll have to come out that way. So it'll top out, and the bottom of the plane is caught. And the same with the large plane. And yeah, so the Stanley's just caught by the front, and these planes are caught by the back. It's a nice little simple system, and it works. And uh, the block plane is just compression fit in there like that. So that's going to sit there. So I get these planes out now. I'm going to do a final sanding on this carcass and now I'm going to apply a Danish oil finish and then it's nearly time for assembly. So I get all that done and I'll get back to you when I have it ready for assembly. Okay, I have all the Danish oil on it now. Just a one coat, that'll do. It's going to be in the workshop. It's not going to be exposed to too much hardship and it's easy giving it a wipe of oil every time it needs it anyway. So I've just fit three butt hinges to it. Nice and simple, just screw them to the side of the box. I wanted a piano hinge, couldn't get one. So three heavy duty butt hinges is what went on and they're very simple. Don't have to recess them or anything. Just screw them straight on and uh, yeah, they're good and stiff. So the door will be held like that and it can go all the way around to if needs be. So they are perfect, are more than adequate for this door. And uh, yeah, so now I'm going to fit some magnets and uh, little plates. So little plates will go on the inside of the door, magnets will go on the inside of the carcass, and it's just to seal the door. So it just gets a good uh, click and gets pulled in just to stop that air getting into it. Um, it's not airtight, but just, you know, if I can stop the moisture circulating, put a little dehumidifier in there and hopefully it should do the job. So yeah, we're almost ready to go. I'll fit these, they're very straightforward. Like I said, they're just magnets. I'll show you when it's all up and, and done. It's just a couple of screws, line everything up and a few screws and then we're almost done. So let me get that done. Then we'll mount it, put a light in it and uh, yeah, we'll see what it looks like. So here's a little trick for you if you're ever trying to line up these magnets with their plate counterparts or metal counterparts. Just take a little marker couple little lines on the magnets themselves, close the door, and there's your lines to where your plates need to go. So it's a nice little simple tip, just take a little marker, put it on them, close that, that will mark it for you. You don't have to try and line everything up then, you can see exactly where that needs to go. So there you go, little tip of the day. Perfect, there we go. All we need now is a handle, and we have a lead, so let's make one.
Okay, the last thing I'm doing is fitting this little cabinet spot. It's just a little LED cabinet spot. Um, these can be recessed into the timber or you can just use a little surface mount kit that comes with them. So this isn't thick enough to recess it in, so I'm just gonna use a little surface mount kit. And they're very straightforward. I'm just gonna plug this in for the time being and uh, I might fit a switch for it at a later date. But for now, I'm just gonna run the flex around the carcass and Simple as that. So I'm just going to clip this around down the side. It'll be hidden behind the door and I'm just going to plug it in for now. So I'll get on that and then it's nearly going to be time to mount this thing up. Right, there we go. It is up on the wall. I've mounted it with some L brackets on top and I've replaced these screws down here with bigger ones to screw straight through the thing itself. So it's held there, so it's uh, fairly sturdy. The door is finished, the handle is on that I made on the lathe, so a nice little ash handle there. Magnets are all lined up, that's happy days. We have our light in, our cable is just clipped down the side and across to our plug, and the overlap on the door hides the cable so you can't see it. I might put a switch on it at a later date, but for now, that's good enough. So I've just added a little shelf here, just to hold my Ashley Oils chisels. So I want this to hold all my good woodworking hand tools and help stop them rusting. So uh, yeah, so let's load this thing up now and uh, I'll give you a closer look. Let's do it. Right, there we go. One tool cabinet with a light inside in it, plain tail, holders for the chisels, and plenty of space up here for extra little bits and bobs that I'm gonna get over the next year or so. As I continue with this, we're working some, some shoulder planes, some rebate planes, and a few other little planes. I wanna swap out this big faithful plane for um, a Stanley, a few other little bits and pieces like that. I've also, I have this um, dehumidifier, so I'm just gonna unbox this. That's just one of those ones that just sit in here and it just absorbs the moisture out of the air. There's a 12 month, 12 month supply of um, the aggregate that goes inside in it that pulls the moisture out of the atmosphere. So that'll sit in there when this is closed in the night time and hopefully that will do the job. That and I'll just have to keep my tools oiled. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy that one guys. You can make this out of plywood. You could make this out, a whole cabinet out of birch ploy. I just used um, that TV cabinet because it was oak and it was good to just reclaim it and uh, like I say but everything you've seen me do here you could do that with birch ploy and it would be a beautiful cabinet as well so yeah now if anything you see me use in the workshop any tools any questions you have about for me there's links in all my videos below to all my tools that I recommend books that I recommend for woodworking the camera equipment I'm using they're all Amazon links so if you click on any of them and you want to buy something that will help my channel it doesn't cost you anything extra or even if you're going to buy something from Amazon just use one of those links to get to Amazon and I get a couple of pence from every sale. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just the way you can support the channel. So yeah, that's all below in the description if you want to check that out. I'm also on Instagram. If you want to check that out, it's man.in.shed. Again, links to that will be below. And my t-shirt stuff, that's all linked below as well. So yeah, there you go, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that build and I shall see you in the next one. Take it easy.